summer. Boys from New Hampshire, Paul Grant, along with Greg Gouillard and Mike Morin on Candle and Bowling Network, a great raucous crowd on hand. Welcome, Mike Morin, radio personality of six century. Six century, right? Six decades. Uh, yeah, since the year 632. Seems like 32, right? It really does. Before Gutenberg invented the uh, the, <laughs> the printed page, there was Candle Pin Bowling. But anyway, it's good to be here. Some of these faces are just priceless to see. I, I hope everybody enjoys today's broadcast. Before we start, tell us about your three books real quick, how they can get your latest book. Well, the latest book is about the Red Arrow Diner in uh, New Hampshire. It's 100 years old, and all presidential visits, and a lot of people love the place. Adam Sandler is a big fan, and it's available. Uh, just get in touch with me on Facebook. Thank you for asking. Okay, thank you very much. And you ready to roll? Let's, let's do it. Okay. Let's welcome the 20 uh, Candleton Bullets Hall of Fame members. Let's hear from them. Ladies, I'm old-fashioned. Ladies and poor gentlemen, Carol Downey. Please welcome Hall of Famer, 2008 inductee, Janet Hawk. Left-hander, 2014 Hall of Famer, still ball at a high level. Please welcome Mr. Coca-Cola, Fred Holbrook. From the class of 2018, please welcome Bob Moran. Bob Moran. Mike Moran. Bob Moran. From the class of 2018, please welcome Don Richmond. The man, the, man, the man responsible for the Wild 2.0 shirt, John Winchell. Let's hear it for John Winchell. Remember your broadcast. 
Some of these guys you're going to see in the Hall of Fame down the road. The microphone's on. From Maine, please welcome 124 league bowler Scott. I'm not related to Jeff Lapierre. A future Hall of Famer for sure. Please welcome Mike Poulin. The ladies' high single world record, 207. Please welcome Brenda Magdalene. Out of Agawam Bowl, Agawam Mass. Who has over $500 donation from a fundraiser for us today. Susie Beaupre. Tom Olsen's grandson, Aaron Fontaine. Two-time world champion, two 200 games so far, Nick the Train Collector, Norcross. A couple of young bowlers trying to get better, Angie Scott. Kevin Burns. Move around a little bit because nobody can hear you. It's about it, the battery, it's the battery, yes. Please welcome Jonathan Boudreau and the destroyer, Josh Daly. Can you bring up your the charge up? Okay. Welcome, Greg Gouillard. Welcome back, Mike Warren. What a great list of people we have here, huh? Wow, I didn't realize that many were really in the house. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we can get the format going here. So while you talk to Greg, while I get that started, okay? All right. Why don't we take it to the scene? All right, I'm, I'll just kind of paint a picture of what's going on, although you can probably see anyway what's happening. Uh, some of the biggest names in the game are here from Tommy Olsta, Nancy Bestel, Jackie Ray. That was a nice surprise that he would be joining us today. Just heard that a day or two ago. Uh, I see Bobby Whitcomb who will be going into the class of uh, 2023 at the Castleton in Wyndham. I highly encourage you to attend if you can. It's a full night of just seeing your favorite pro bowlers get the highest honor they can, and that is making it into the Canapin Bowling Hall of Fame. So Bob Whitcomb, uh, who we had a chance to cover on Channel 50 Stars and Strikes for many years on a lot of great matches, He'll be going in. Let's uh, take a look around and see who else. I see Josh Daly. Josh Daly not in the Hall of Fame yet. A little young. You have to be, if you don't know, 50 years of age to make it into the Hall of Fame. And then, of course, you have to be nominated by somebody. There's a lot of people who are very deserving to be in the Hall of Fame. They are not. And people always say, well, why aren't they in it? Well, because nobody nominated them. So if you know somebody that you feel has the credentials and the passion for the game, uh, that would be something that you would want to consider doing. Uh, and you can go to the uh, ICBA uh, website, and they show you how to nominate somebody. Some of the forms are right there. Too late for this year. 2023 is already decided. And honestly, I don't know when the next one will be, uh, but we'll find out, I'm sure, before too long. Again, it's going to be Saturday, October 18th at the Castleton Banquet Center, right off of 93 and Exit 3 in Wyndham, New Hampshire. Uh, Tickets will be going on sale quite soon, I would imagine. And uh, this is Greg. Greg is our amazing uh, producer and uh, uh, all the wires. Never, I don't know how you do it, but uh, how long have you been a huge fan of this this game of Canapin? Uh, so right now, my, my love of the game started, I think, a few years ago. Uh, I remember finding Wolfman 12395's channel originally, he's Mike Sweeney, and he's here today. Right, he's on YouTube. That's right. right. Um, and just going down the rabbit hole of content. Uh, <laughs> And then uh, I did see the video with you and the late, great Dan Murphy on a uh, guide to introductory candlepin bowling. Mm. And uh, I think from there, it was just a natural progression into being a fan of the game. And yeah, so uh, it, it was one thing to another. It was a league, and then suddenly it was like, I want to broadcast this game to <laughs> a bigger thing. And uh, right. here we are, got the equipment and made it happen. Well, uh, you, you really are, you stay calm under, you know, the most difficult of circumstances sometimes. But we've got it on the air today, and it's going to be uh, a program more about the bowlers and their stories. Uh, we're not counting scores. The, the fans are here to bowl with their favorite professional bowlers. Bart Maderos and the Maderos family 
Uh, they are actually uh, giving all the, the bowling away today for free. So if, if you're watching this and you're anywhere near Portsmouth, uh, please come visit us uh, right on Lafayette Avenue, uh, one of the great bowling centers that was taken over by the Madero's family after the Jenna Montes has sold it to them uh, probably five years ago. The, uh, uh, the Jenna Montes family had it for pretty close to, well, they bought it in 1956 or, or opened it then. So uh, I guess they had it for probably 60 years or pretty close to that. What a wonderful family they really were and still are, of course. And so let's hand the microphone over. Thank you, uh, Greg, for, for sitting down and chatting just a little bit. Welcome back. Yes. So I've hey. been I've been giving a, a little bit. Oh, what? What are these sky bars here from the old old TV old camera sky bars? Those there it awesome. is. You are a real fan of the the they're, sky they're bar, awesome. aren't you? They're really good. Four different flavors. They're awesome. Well, nice job on the introduction. Well, thank you. With the microphone ran out of battery juice up the wireless mic. Yeah, little, little I hate choppy. when that happens. But yeah. I, I hope everybody heard it on home. You had a one of our microphones. Yep. Ready to go. Yep. So the the bowlers uh, tell me what 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 do you think? So we're gonna have a couple Hall of Famers on the lanes. And we're going to have a pro bowler and a, a couple of guest bowlers to get the ball at the pros. So we're going to have Craig Holbrook and Tom Olsen side by side. And then we're going to have Bob Wickham, Aaron Fontaine up there. We're going to have Scott Lapier, his son Benjamin, Angie Scott, and some other ones, Jack Ray and his son also. So we're going to take turns rotating. We'll have four people bowling, two boxes at a time. Again, it's more of an exhibition, so not too serious. I'd like, like to welcome those in the WON Sports Network watching later on. Jonathan Rios, thanks for helping out putting our name out there in Kenneth Bowling in New York and across the country. So I think that uh, we'll be uh, pulling over as many bowlers as we can yes. because the idea is for people to, to meet the, the stars that they've watched on TV but maybe never knew much about. Yep. And they all have their stories, and, and uh, you and I both have uh, interesting approaches to how we want to interview these people. So uh, I'm going to do it naked, so I hope okay. you don't mind. Yeah. All right. Thanks <laughs> for a second here. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry, that's not going to happen. Great to see you again, Greg. You, you could be on. You could All be right, on so the Hall uh, of Fame. So we have Mr. Paul Grant, who's <laughs> out <laughs> explaining guy, how he liked uh, the professional bowlers, and we'll give you a look at that all. right now. As I step I'm aside. Fun. Why not? Now, so much help donate to the women's doubles event. And we get some shots <laughs> of uh, Paul talking to Craig Holbrook. No pressure. No pressure. All right. All right. I want to see you go with Tom Ulster, Okay, you got to throw a triple strike against him. Okay. Oh my God. Oh, I better warm up a little bit first before I attempt that. All right. Yeah. All right, let's get some balls in the lane here. So I also see Bobby Whitcomb. All right, Scott Lapierre, come on up. Pro ball of Scott Lapierre. And Bob Whitcomb, a Hall of Famer. Let's go, side by side. Scott balls out of Bull O'Rama, Bull O'Rama in Tampa, Maine. And Scott, high single 207, right? It's on YouTube, right? Yeah, YouTube. Yeah, you can find it. Scott Lapierre, 207, right on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Bob Wickham, strong candidate for the Hall of Fame first bout, like I thought it would be all along. 32 consecutive years, a 120 average. How many people can say that? Well, I'm sure there's a few out there, but there's a few out there, but I've been bowling a long time, and lucky enough to get my health, so and I still enjoy the game, and I enjoy the people in the game. How, how's, how's the foot feeling? The foot feels great. Feels great. Really well-known name in Candleton. He did the, he was the voice of Cameron on Channel 50 for years and years. Dick Lux! Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for being here. All right, Mike, come on down. It's you, Dick Lux. All right, let's, let's step, come on down. Come on down, Dick Lux. All right. All right. <laughs> Mike Poulin. It's great to see all these faces today, and I'm glad that, First of that all, you sorry, came. We want to see you two bowl side by side. No, I don't think so. Not that's today. not going to happen. No. Not today. No. That, that ship has sailed back at, at Pilgrim Lanes, well, I'll right? I'll take you on one more time, but I need a little time to recover. Do you realize that I'm up to about a 118 average now? You are, huh? I believe that. <laughs> yeah. I don't, somehow I, I question that. But, but, but look around at, at some of the faces. Uh, it's great. Steve Reno, Jackie Ray. Uh, Tommy Olsen's here, Steve Vandy, Carol Ann Downey, uh, and who else do we have? Uh, Aaron Fontaine, who was the grandson of uh, the great Tommy Olsen. I, mean, I was uh, just talking to Bart uh, Medeiros, the, the, the proprietor, about mm -hmm. the success of this place since he's taken it over, and it's it's remarkable. It, it's 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 a great great facility. I know the people who bowl here on a regular basis, and they come here often. And uh, Bart's done a great job, and it's a, it's beautiful to, to see it continue on in the history of Candlepin Bowling, we need more places like this. 
and it's, re it's really tough financially. Uh, you get a nice day in August like this, and there's nobody on the lanes. So he is uh, very kindly donating all the bowling today. Uh, nobody's paying anything, hoping that some of the money will go into the Candle Pins for Cancer uh, fundraising that, that they've been a part of, and they've asked me to be a part of it as well, too. So I'm so glad you came today, it's though. It's great, and I'm, I'm happy to be here, happy to re renew acquaintances with all of these people who joined us oh. for those eight years we spent together on Candle oh Pins, Stars, and Strikes. Did you see Hawk Hallis back there in one of the most memorable matches we ever did against Joe Ashline? Do you remember that day? I, I, I don't, but you'll refresh my memory. I'll refresh your memory. It was a third game, and uh, Joe Ashline had about a 63-pin lead. It was in the third box, and Hawk Hallis just went nuts I do and won the match by one pin. I do remember. It was one of the great ones, yeah. And We've had, we had so many. Oh, we had so we, many good we ones. did. Yeah. And, and I'm sure the day that, that uh, Tommy Morgan bowled his, his last strings in the uh, Tournament in of Champions. Forever. It was it was a tough one to get through that one. Yeah, it was very emotional. An emotional I mean, time for all I mean, of us. I mean, he's been gone 17, 18 years, that perhaps. Long now? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the memories, the highs, the lows, and we had a lot of fun doing it together. It was always uh, a joy to have you on my, at my we side. Look forward to that time at Lita Lanes every week when we could be there and see all of our friends and the people who came to those tapings every week. Every so many of them were familiar fr faces and friends, and uh, it's great to see so many people again. I, I, you know, I don't really watch too many of the, the videos. Uh, all the shows we did are on YouTube. But when I look in there, I say, oh, my God. There's like 300 people here, and they would always be there at 7 in the morning looking to get their favorite seat. Is our challenge match on YouTube the one that I, the one that oh, I, hammer, I, the one that I hammered you? I uh, I think one of them, that one may have accidentally gotten deleted from yeah, the uh, yeah. <laughs> YouTube What a file. shock. What a shock. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, good to see you. I think the bowling is about to start. Great. Let them go. <laughs> So the, the chirping has begun on the part of Tommy Olsta. You do have to shoot. How about some play-by-play -play here, these guys, yes. right? Exhibition, okay? Go for yeah. it, Dick. Greg Holbrook, one of the great lefties. I love to watch the great lefty. Uh. Yeah. Let me step out of the way. <laughs> now, of course, Craig Holbrook is still very active in Candlepin bowling. Uh, Tommy is not, but uh, you know, give him give him a couple of little warm up boxes. I happened to speak with Craig the last time there was a function. Was it last year? The year before? It, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember what it was. I missed you. You had left uh -huh. by the time I got there. But it was an event uh -huh. going on, and, and uh, I spent some time with Craig. Craig is a uh, a great guy, great personality, and a great ambassador for the game. That's very well put. That's exactly it. And he really bowls at a very high level. I think he is 60 now. If I'm, uh, and I love his shirt. Things go better with Craig Holbrook. He works for Coke, of course. Naturally. Well, we're all getting a little bit older, Michael. You know that? It happens to all of us. Yeah, that kind of stinks, doesn't it? But that's life. Got to make room for the kids, for the younger uh, people coming up. There's a shot. <laughs> all right. I don't think they're keeping scores on this, but. Oh, oh wow, back-to-back -back shots. <laughs> well, one of the greatest matches on Channel 5, uh, long before you and I got together, was, was the two guys where Tommy Olsta struck out. He was coming from behind and ended up beating Craig Holbrook by just a couple pins to get into the, uh, the Tournament of Champions. You have five bucks for Candlepin for Cancer. Whoever loses this box could get five dollars for Candlepin for Cancer. Ten of it's Craig Holbrook. <laughs> I didn't know we had a money game going here, oh, but apparently it Paul Grant. All right. Well, he can definitely. How would you play this one, Dick? Hit, hit the dead wood. <laughs> Ricochet it off the wood. <laughs> I'll bet he makes this. This is makeable, very you know, makeable. Now we're just watching these two guys right now, but all the pros will be out in a few minutes. Ah, oh, you still got it. Set up pretty easily. Yeah. Even you could have made that one, Mike. Hey, Aaron. What, what do you call him? Juju. Juju. Yeah. So have you take have you taken him to school yet, or is he still uh, showing you? Oh God, he's still taking me to school. You kidding me? That's one of the grandsons of Tommy Osta, Aaron Fontaine, 
I don't know. Is Nathan here today? No, no. no not today. I mean, crap, I average 120. He's still taking me to school. <laughs> and that's bowling a couple times a week, right? 120? Yeah. Nothing wrong with that, of course. I should have told Josh, yeah, we should have put some money. How much he's going to hit a 200 today? Could have put 100 bucks on. Let's see, also hit a 200 today. There's a, there's a nice shot. Oh. All right, 20 bucks, you make this clean. <laughs> a nice shot, nice by, shot by Craig, Craig Holbrook. Oh, look at this. <laughs> he thought he was Andy Verapapa. Do you remember him, Dick? I remember Andy Verapapa. <laughs> I very well. <laughs> so it's uh, all happening today at Bolarama. Andy in Portsmouth. Was very often on the Saturday morning. Angie Scott. Angie Scott now, who is one of the uh, fans. She has a 78 average right now, fairly new to the game. And she'll get to bowl with Craig Holbrook. But I think we'll get, we'll get all the lanes going here eventually because there are a lot of people that do want to bowl. Oh, the one, the eight, and the nine. She actually has a chance to win this box. You mentioned Andy Vera Papa, and I remember as a kid growing up watching the Ten Pin shows on, on TV. Oh, and, sure. Uh, Whispering Joe Wilson. Do you remember Whispering I Joe Wilson? I actually do not, no. He, he was the announcer. I, I remember the name, but I don't know he, that I ever heard as him. As a bowler would get ready to bowl, he'd start whispering at a yeah. very low, low, low level. What, he thought he was doing a golf match. Craig bowled ten strings today. All right. Are we going to get all the other bowlers out there? Everybody can bowl at once? All right. Bob Whitcomb on the on-deck circle. 2023. Hi, Bob. Good to see you. How are you? How are you doing? Good. Bob was one of our regulars. He um, was. And he's going into the Hall of Fame. No surprise there. The only surprise was I didn't think he was old enough. <laughs> it's true, Bobby. I didn't think you were old. Like I told you earlier, I didn't think you were old enough to be in. So I was shocked when I saw your name on there. I said, wow, I know he's good enough. but <laughs> 57 years old. But when he was on wow. with you and I doing the he show, he's in, he was in his 30s, maybe yeah. 40, just like us. <laughs> yep. All right. Hey, Craig. Hey, Craig. Dick, well, thank you for good coming job, by. by it was so uh, good. Don't forget so your five dollars for cannabis we'll for cancer. All right, soon. I'll okay, be up in the bucket, okay? No don't get your new wow shoe. All right. All right. All right, Bob uh, Wickham, incoming class. What Another am I class doing act. here? Both Craig Holbrook in the Friday Night Pro League. Absolutely. Yeah. Craig and I have been bowling since the uh, early 90s, over 30 years. Uh, you're going to bowl Aaron Fontaine. I know. I just, uh, that's for a couple Tommy. of boxes. Yeah. Aaron, Aaron, I've known Aaron for a long up and coming bowler. It's great to see him. Tommy's. Uh, so, what does DraftKings so have on this prediction? Right, no pressure. <laughs> ah, uh, him fair by about $100, maybe more. <laughs> all right, Aaron, five bucks to the loser, okay? Can't help us for cancellation. Right? That, that's all right. Ten bucks for Bob Wickham if you lose. What? No, great to be with you again. You as well. And uh, I, I would love to because before time gets away, I want to get as many bowlers down here that we can Absolute, talk to absolutely, and interview. Absolutely. And I think Tommy Ulster would be a good start because we just got to see him bowl. He's talking to all his fans. So uh, I'm going to go see if he'll come chat with us on the on the chair here, on the uh, settee. Aaron Fontaine. Let's see. If I can get Tommy Olsen to, to come visit us. So I'm going to go away for a minute, and I think Paul class will do the Bob talking. On lane nine. Exhibition Candle Pins for Cancer. The 501c3 charity. You can donate via Venmo. Go to candlepins number 4 cancercom That's candlepins number 4 cancercom Any amount is greatly appreciated. Only for candle pin balls and relatives going through cancer treatments. And a very good bowler. Bob Wickham. Look at that shot. Thank you. 
The gauntlet has been tossed by Bart Medeiros, co-owner of the Bowling Center. Hundred dollar challenge. Okay. Mostly water. Yeah, all right. Aaron Fontaine. Hey, how do they feel to bowl with Bob Wickham? Did you bowl with them side by side, with John? Probably not. But I haven't thrown a ball in two months. That's why I'm a little shaky right now. Okay. Now this next box. Hold on, guys. This next box. Five dollars for candle pins for cancer. Okay. Lose the base. Five dollars for candle pins for cancer. In this next box. All right. Aaron Fontaine, again, grandson of Tom Olster, Bob Wickham, a $5, $5 challenge. Oh, we got a special guest here. We do. <laughs> Mike Morin. Don Richmond. Yeah. Uh, I, I how'd, you, mean, how'd you show up here? Just stop, drop by. <laughs> get invisible powers, huh? Yeah, well, I heard about this, and I said, you know, I haven't seen a lot of these people in a long time, all, all the Hall of Famers and future Hall of Famers as well, so. I, I only got one bone to pick with you, though. Uh-oh. You're, you're, you're not wearing a WOW shirt. <laughs> Oh wow! No, we did buy one. <laughs> so, so Tommy is giving his grandson Aaron uh, a little, a little lesson here. Oh, is he? <laughs> where, where do you live? Be a lesson too. Oh, well, you're you're not alone, big fella. Oh, I know. But boy, weren't those the good old days? The golden yeah. days on Channel Five. They were very good days for me. Yeah. Yeah. I had a good run for about 15 years and everything. You know, it was very. Uh, the the comp competitiveness was uh, at, at peak in then, you know, and since the show had gone away, but uh, the leader of Lange's uh, picked up a, a show that hold lasted on, on a second, few guys. years, and, and then it seemed like everything disappeared, you know. Now look at this shot. All right, Who's we'll got the better chance here, Don? Who's got the better chance to make this? Aaron or, or Bob Wickham, third oh, shot. Oh, <laughs> Who has the better chance? Who's got the better chance of making this one? Have you made either of these shots in your career before without wood? Without wood, no. The five, seven, ten, uh, maybe once, maybe once, and the other shot, maybe once too. It's a very tough cut. <laughs> and you didn't use bumper guards, did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll help these guys now. <laughs> Back to Mike Warren. So, did you have a memory or two from Channel Five of uh, a really good day or a really bad day that comes to mind? Well, there were. Both, you know, I, I've had quite a few bolts there. I said, bowl well <coughs> and not beat anybody. <laughs> that was against Tommy, Dickie O'Connell, and Get Klein, uh, Hall of Famers at this point, you know. So uh, I've had some bad ones and got away with them, but I've had bad ones and not get away with them too, you know. So it kind of uh, comes out in the wash, you know. All right, Paul Bob Wickham lost the challenge, so he has to pay $5 for Ken Opens for Cancer. Has anybody now, gotten a strike yet? Hold on a second, Peter Flynn, hold on. Hold on, Peter <laughs> Flynn. Peter Flynn. All right, okay, you're gonna bowl two boxes with him, okay? Five boxes with him, okay, five boxes. If you lose, $10 for candle pins for cancer, all right? The loser, $10, 20 for you. That's all right, I don't wanna lose. Take it out of your Swiss bank account. <laughs> all right, they, they're gonna do five boxes, $20 for the person that loses. <laughs> wow. So look like I, I bowl now. <laughs> <laughs> do you bowl at all? I do one night one night a week. Yeah, he came back. And <laughs> I think we just got a strike there from Peter well, Flynn. It's actually a spear because the ball oh, got a ball. <laughs> Stop it, really? Yeah. Oh, no. You missed it. I did hold miss on, it. Peter, yeah. Peter, hold on. Oh my goodness. <laughs> How about that? So where you bowl? What 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 center? Uh, Timber Lanes, hold Webster on, Timber Lanes, and Abbey. Hold on, I think we're gonna do a booth review on that strike. We've been there for the first time a few months ago doing a for a magazine. We've been, and we've, what a nice place. We think you're on the line. And the owner oh, is Sir John. John, 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 Aaron Fontaine has a pretty good little uh, snap on the ball, doesn't he? Who's that? That's oh. uh, who we're watching right here, Tommy's yeah. grandson. Let's see, it's for the young now. <laughs> or younger. They're all younger. In fact, I, I guess Peter, I, can, Peter can only handle two boxes, I guess, so. <laughs> Aaron's, out ten, Aaron's out 10 bucks. Well, well I, 
I see that I see that Craig Holbrook has the menu, so he's ready to, for lunch, I guess. Yes, I think he is, too. <laughs> well, I'll let you get back to your friends. I just wanted to say hi. All right. Thank all right. you for all the fun that you gave us. All right. You know. It was fun there, too. Believe yeah, it really me. It was. Remember Dick we there? Were and, you, know, yeah. I mean, it was you, were, you were a pretty intense bowler, as I recall. Yeah, I was. <laughs> and then, yeah. But, you know, it was, a, it was a big deal. And it was it was tougher sometimes to qualify than what yes. right? Exactly, because there were more bowlers there. They're trying to reach that same uh, level, you know, and to get to, and then the, the easier part was getting on, but it wasn't at first. The first show was very nervous. Uh, great to see you, Don. Thank you. Back to you, Paul. $100 donation. Peter Flynn got the strike challenge. $100 for Candle Pits for Cancer. Let's see if it's good. <laughs> okay, now we're going to have a challenge. Steve Reno Sr. in the Hall of Fame with your father, Harry S Reno. Congratulations on winning that. Thanks. Thanks again. And now you get the ball, arguably the best bowler in all the game, Tom Holster. And one of my dearest friends. Okay, now the loser of this five-box match got to give $10 to Cannabis for Cancer. Tommy taught me a lot, but I know he didn't teach me everything because he wanted to keep a few tricks to himself, you know. That's why he won so many things, you know. He knows a, a few certain things that I don't know. Now, did you bring your shoe disinfectant spray for your lanes to use now? To I get did. Oh, yeah. Beat them? They're all waxed up. They're ready to go. All right, now, if you lose, it's $10. Half, yeah. If you lose to him, it's $10 for cannabis for cancer. Tom Ulster, if you lose, it's $20 for cannabis oh, for cancer. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Practice yeah. than me, so it should be 20 for him. <laughs> All right, five, five bucks of Steve Reno, senior Tom Ulster, Hall of Famers. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Steve Reno will lead off on lane 10 at Bowlerama in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Great place to bowl. 22 lanes, great ownership in Bart Medeiros. Wonderful staff. Very festive here. Steve Reno Sr. drops down 8 as the 6 and 10. Piece of wood to help. Five boxes. $20 donation if Tom Holster loses. 10 if Steve Reno Sr. loses. And Steve picks it up for a spare. Four more to go, Steve. And Steve will take the lead. Hall of Fame exhibition on Canop and Bowling Network. Ulster at eight. So Steve has a two pin lead plus a ball. Five blocks 